Oh, well, hello. Welcome back to After the Episode with Tony and Teresa. I want to stop. Where we talk about <laughs> what happened in the episode after. After. Yeah. The episode. Yeah. The day after. Yes. Because we talk about this, the stuff in the video on Thursday, the day after. Okay. So it's on Friday. They we got call it. it after it's after the episode. The episode. So. for the Winter Barracuda. Winter Barracuda. Yeah, that just came yeah, out yesterday. Just came out yesterday. All right, so we were fishing in the middle of the city of Pensacola. In an industrial mm -hmm. neighborhood slash canal. Lower bayou. Um, yeah. Looking for deeper water because it's cooler. Okay, yeah. So yeah. it was January? January. Temperature was, I say, low 60s. It was rain. mid 60s. The rain mm -hmm. was coming in. Mm -hmm. Overcast and rain. And, uh, which was making it cooler. And the water temperatures in the, in the low, probably low 60s. Yes, yes. We were looking for trout. If you saw the episode, we never found big trout. We, we found we, little we sand, found trout. Sound tr sand trout. Sand mm trout, -hmm. that was it. Caught a baby jack and a redfish, and the prize was. Barracuda! Well, I was throwing that white gulp shrimp, three inch, mm -hmm. with the chartreuse tail. Yeah. And I had that on one rod. I had that on my Clash 2500 with my McCain okay. popping spin, seven foot, and the 2500 with my spider wire 15 pound test, which I feel is the best all around. And on my uh, Revo Beast, a jerk bait, a Berkeley Cutter 110 jerk bait. Mm -hmm. So I was going back and forth between the two, some bait blowing up. I was like, oh, something's popping on that bait. So I threw over there on that point. Current was coming around the point. Got a hit, threw back over there. Wham, thought I caught a monster speck. Yes, thought it was a trout. But it wasn't. Nope. It was a? Barracuda. Redfin is my yeah, go-to. Yeah, you caught your redfish in the episode on what? Gulp. Jerk shed. Heavier jig head, whatever yeah, it was. Yeah, they were. They were heavier. Because we were fishing in a deeper canal. Yeah. So that's kind of search baits for us. We like to search the water. With gulp, if it's off scent, we can peck the bottom. We can work the mid column. So we were in a search mode, yeah, because we didn't know what was in that bayou in the No, this time. was our first time fishing that bayou, and it wasn't a great day to go fishing because it had rained really bad. Hard. As you see in the, the beginning, before, you see the water rushing yeah. when I talk about my X-wing fighter. All right. So some of the stuff we were wearing, uh, you had frog togs on. It's, hey. it's big enough. It feels like paper. Yeah, it does. Good enough to just put on over what you're wearing and it protects you from the rain. I'll tell y'all a story about frog togs. I wore that exact same frog togs jacket in a light tan color in Manhattan, walking around Manhattan, and I got stopped by three people that wanted to know who my designer was and where they came from. Frog well dog paper. Three okay. people. It's fabulous. Where'd you get that? That's an awesome jacket. Is that the new season? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So I'm, from right the, here, I'm from the south. Yeah. So right here you have on the anetic sleeves and the anetic yes. buff. And That's we've it. been using these sleeves like crazy lately. You if don't you got a t-shirt on and you just want to get some coverage on your arm, you yeah. can pop these on really quick. And these anetic buffs are cool because they have mouth holes and that prevents your glasses from fogging. They're also shaped to go over yeah, your hat. They're cut. And then they shaped to come down around your neck. And then we had <coughs> the Berkeley pliers. We both keep a pair of these Berkleys in the boat with us. They're aluminum. The aluminum, Ty, the aluminum. <laughs> I don't use the holster. I just clip mine onto a pad eye or yeah. something in the boat and stick them under my seat. We're doing a giveaway right now of a pair of those, actually. If y'all go to 30 Miles Out Facebook, and comment on the, um, we're looking for the best quotes from a 30 Miles Out episode. And they've been coming Ever. up with some really funny ones. Yeah, take a look at it. It's, it's hilarious. It's uh, on Facebook. The quotes people are coming up with. It's absolutely Post hilarious. your quote. We're going to pick three. And then we're going to put them back on Facebook. And, and you the, yeah. pick the final, the yeah, winner. The winner. Going over to Facebook. So, so back to the episode. Barracuda in January. I was very surprised. Yes. Mm -hmm. Have you guys ever caught a barracuda in North Florida in January? If you have, comment below. Does the trick. I love my pin bag. It's waterproof. Compression. Yeah, it's like a compression sack and you can let the air out of the valve. But the main thing is it's waterproof and I can put my, my extra rain jacket, my extra clothes, and grab it and bring it up front, take stuff out and put it behind me very easily and nothing gets wet that's in their bag. Yeah. 
Doesn't want to carry a milk crate. Doesn't want to carry anything. Trying to keep it lighter and more efficient. And to me, that just works better. I'm always trying to make things work better and lighter and faster. So, so now we have some YouTube questions that we're going to answer. Da, 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 from question the time. It's question time. Good boat. Okay, that's loud. It's question time. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So Tyler, what hooks do you put on the freshwater stuff to keep them from rusting? Even with a good rinse, my hooks seem to rust after just one trip. Wanted to see what kind y'all use. Yeah, well in here you see me using the Berkeley bass bait, the jerk bait, it's a cutter 110. And that is a total freshwater thin hooked uh, jerk bait. And they're gonna rust, you gotta, I'll rinse them down immediately until those hooks go bad. Once those hooks go bad, I go to the store and I get mustad, or Gamagatsu saltwater hooks with stainless steel rings and I put them on there and uh, make them stouter. And if it's a bait that gets hit a lot and I need it to be even more stouter than that, then I put two watt Gamagatsu single hooks on there. Uh, we use a lot of single hooks for bigger stuff like bull reds top water, big Spanish top water. Right there, that's the hook that we use. <laughs> Hopefully I hit that right. <laughs> Okay, Marcio Costa, your MD-180, Mirage Drive 180, Mar yeah. has turbo fins, question mark. Do you feel like you need them? All right, Mario. You don't have um, no. turbo fins on either of the kayaks. Neither one of our kayaks that you see in this video have turbo fins. My main Revo does not have turbo fins. It has just standard issue Mirage Drive fins. But the, the, the standard issue stuff gets better and better every year. And it's been several years since I've even thought about turbos because the new, since they've got the new design with the more efficient drive, I actually like the gear ratio, so to speak, of the regular size Mirage drive with the just more efficient ball bearings and stuff. I think they come out of the box perfect. I don't think there's any need for improvements on the Mirage drive. Worked really the well. turbo fins in the open increase the speed, but it was almost even with the newer, more efficient Mirage drive. Plus the turbo fins are longer, so when you're on the flats, they're more irritating. Okay, a little lengthy, but okay. I can chop some of it out. <laughs> I can chop some out if I need to. <laughs> Instagram comment. Christopher Weaver, how do you like that clash compared to the conflict? It's the clash versus the conflict. Those two are like the conflict is like right at 120 something. The clash is a little bit more like right around 150, 170. I like them both, man. The clash is almost two ounces lighter than the conflict, but we we put them both in our hands with the same rod. This is a clash. There wasn't. And we difference. couldn't really tell that two ounce difference. And I like them both, man. I really do. So it's, I've always said the conflict is the best bang for the buck. So thanks, buddy. Mm -hmm. We're doing Instagram and we're also doing Snapchat now. So if, you, if there's any, any of you alligator Snapchatters <laughs> out there, what do you Snappers? Snappers? Chatters? Snapchatters? Snapper chatters? If you're a snapper chatter, <laughs> And you do that, I'm starting that on the interwebs. It's a struggle and I'm, I'm, I'm laughing hysterically. I'm on the online. Me. Yeah, so I'm on there. So join me on, on Snapchat. Follow me. Or add jo you. Like me on Snapchat. Add you. <laughs> Find it. Snapchat me, man. It's Ty 30 miles out. Ty 30 miles out. Snapchat me. All Give me a word, thumbs up. Right? Give it a like. Yeah, all right, cool. All right, well, Just thanks a lot it. for watching. No, you're closing we're, it out. We're not done. No. Hey, look. We, Look, we have a lot of people always asking me, hey, where do you get the tactical angler clips? Where do you get that reel in the episode? Every episode now, I post up our uh, Amazon store, the 30 Mile Out Amazon the store. Link. And above that, I put the items from the episode. Yeah, we kind of got smart. Mardi Gras starts this weekend, so... Uh, throw us up, mister. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to like. We'll catch y'all right here on After the Episode. Every Friday. Every Friday. Happy Mardi Gras, people.